So um, this little project I found is called WebIO Pi. It's a web application that um, you can install on your Raspberry Pi. And what you can see here is um, all of the GPIO headers and um, an in-out button next to each one of those. What that allows you to do is to send a high-low signal or an in-out signal to one of the GPIO headers without having to use a single line of code. It's really useful for troubleshooting um, some of your electronics projects. Um, and it's also really useful if you wanted to control your Raspberry Pi over the internet because it's a web interface, so you could use it from a mobile phone or a laptop or anything you want. So um, I'll show you how you can install it. So the first thing we need to do is get a copy of the software down to our Raspberry Pi. So we're going to use the wget command to download um, that software. So run the command wget and then put in that long URL there. Um, if you're not sure about um, if that's the latest version, just go to um, webiopi.googlecode.com and have a look there for the latest version. Then extract the file using the command tar-zxvf against the file name and that will uncompress and um, get all the files onto your, um, your Raspberry Pi. Once that's done, um, we're then going to want to run the setup um, for um, this piece of software. So we're going to run the command sudo dot forward slash setup dot sh, sh, which should just run. Notice that it's, um, it's actually written in Python this. And once that's finished building, Okay, so that's now installed. So what we want to do is um, actually start the service. So run the command sudo python minus m web io pi. And once we run that command, we'll then see um, that it gives us a URL that we can go to, which is um, HTTP, the IP address of our Raspberry Pi. And then it's port 8000 forward slash web io pi. So um, if you just select that and then you put that into any old browser, you should be able to browse to um, the interface. So the default username is WebIOPi and the password is Raspberry. And here you have the web interface. So you can just click on and off. Um, when it's uh, high, the um, box goes orange. And when it's low, it goes black. And we know that we're sending a, a high and a low signal to our GPIO pin. So see how this is connected to a um, little printed circuit board. This is essentially based off of the original GPIO video I did, which I'll put a link to down there. And as I'm clicking um, one of the pins on and off on, on the web interface, as I did a moment ago, you can see how um, the lights on um, my little board just go on and off. And this is because we're sending a high and a low signal to the um, GPIO pins from the web interface. So I'm going to quickly show you how to set this um, up as a service. Service is essentially having the application running in the background. So if you run the command um, sudo forward slash etc forward slash init.d forward slash web io pi status it will tell us the current status of the web io pi service. At uh, the moment it's failed because it has not been started. If we change the last bit to say start and then check the status, we'll show that it's now running. And if we want to stop it, we simply just change that command to the end to be stop. And then if we check the status again, that service is now stopped. So we'll quickly just start the, um, the service and we'll just go back and check. And I'll do a refresh on that and we can see that that's still working. One of the problems is though, that won't survive a reboot. So we're just going to get this to um, set up the service so it starts on boot. So if you run the command sudo space update dash rc dot d space web io pi space defaults, um, that will set that into the boot process. And if we quickly just um, run the command sudo reboot, our uh, pi will reboot. Um, I'm just gonna open up a, um, a command prompt on my Windows laptop. I'm just going to ping my Raspberry Pi's IP address and um, that will start responding to pings once it comes back up, which is pretty quick. And um, we're then just going to right click on our um, PuTTY SSH session, restart the connection, log back in, and then what we should see is that um, once we've rebooted our Raspberry Pi, 
but the service is still running in the background. Okay, so we go back to here, refresh our um, connection on our browser, and that's still running even though we've rebooted the device. 